Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use full screen shader effects. First thing I'm going to do is I will start a new project in Unity Hub and I'm going to choose editor version 2022.323 F1 long term support version. I believe you need to have editor version 2022 at least for this to be able to work. So if you have an older version of Unity, you might need to upgrade. I am just going to name my project full screen shader tutorial and I'll hit create project to get started I am going to go to the package manager and I will go to the unity registry and I will want to install the universal render pipeline all right now that the universal render pipeline is installed I will go ahead and right click go to create folder and rendering and I like to have all of my universal render pipeline stuff in the rendering folder so I will go to right click create rendering URP asset with universal renderer and then I'll go to my project settings graphics and I will drag in my URP uh, pipeline asset to the scriptable render pipeline settings field here and now we are ready to start doing some effects so just so we have something to look at I will go to our sample scene and I will add a cube and I want to make it a little more dynamic so I'll just change the camera angle to make it a little more dynamic and now we can go ahead and start making our shaders. I'll go ahead and right click, create a new folder called shaders. And in this folder, I'll right click and go to create, shader graph, URP, and full screen shader. I'll just call this FS shader graph and go ahead and open this up. And this is going to be the shader graph for our full screen shader. Nothing too crazy. So first thing I'll do is create a node and I'll use URP sample buffer and I'll sample it from the split source. And just super easy, I'll just hook up the output to the base color, save that, right click on the shader graph, go to create and material. And we have made our first full screen shader. However, we don't have it yet applied. So I will go to rendering and we'll want to select the URP asset. Uh, the looks like it's called new universal render pipeline asset underscore renderer. If you see add render feature, you're in the right place. So we'll click add render feature, full screen pass renderer feature. And by default, it adds an invert full screen colors shader here. So we can actually just say none to that. And then it goes back to normal. And if we want to select our shader, then we can just go to the folder and drag it in here. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same. And that's just because we are actually just sampling the colors and feeding the colors from the blitz source into the fragment shader here. So it should look exactly the same. To make the cube stand out a little bit more, I am going to right click create a new material and I'll just call it red and I'll just make it red and apply it to the cube so it stands out a little more. Now some cool things you can do with this, uh, you can make a bunch of different effects. One thing that you can do with this that you couldn't do with other shaders before is uh, you could go to create and I'll use a twirl and I'll just feed the output here and I'll add a float for strength. Let's just feed that in here. And for the strength, I want to make it a slider, say maybe between negative 10 and 10, the default of zero and I'll save that. Go to our game so we can click on our shader for our full screen and we have this strength slider now. So if I increase that, you can see the effect in action and it's actually twirling the colors of the screen. So if you wanted to make like a little warbly effect, you might be able to utilize something like this. Even with this, we could do like a time node, sign time, hook it up to the strength, and now you can see it kind of warble back and forth, which is kind of cool. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, if you can hook all this up for the full screen shader graph, really it's only what you can come up with is gonna be what limits you here. Um, I can go ahead and show some examples of some stuff that I've been able to create. All right, here is a sample scene that I've created. And one of the effects I have created is a RGB, like LED sort of effect here. So if I change the scale, bring it down, the effect becomes more apparent. They like, if I do 10, you can see I just use this uh, sample texture here. You just tile it with the scale, you can adjust the brightness add some chromatic aberration to offset the red, blue, and green by a bit. Once I scale this up to say like 250, it starts to look kind of like a CRT, which is kind of cool. Of course you can rotate the camera and the effect will stay on the screen. 
And another effect I've created is an outline effect. So instead of using the inverted hull method, like in my last tutorial, you could use a full screen shader offsetting the, uh, or sampling the depth texture. And then it can add like these lines to the edges of objects, which, you know, might be an aesthetic that you're going for. And one other one that I created was a, was kind of like a quantization effect. So it limits the number of colors that can be used. So the further up it goes, the less noticeable it is, but the lower the value, the more noticeable it becomes. And you can get a really stylized look with these effects enabled. If I turn all of these on, you can see this is a really, really stylized look. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I think I'll show you how to create the outline effect. All right, so to create the outline effect, what I am going to do is I will open up our shader graph again, and I'm going to start by adding our properties. So let's go ahead and add a float called depth intensity. And this is going to be a slider from with a default of one between zero and two. I will add, I'll add a float called outline thickness. And this will be a slider from zero to one with a default of zero. And the last thing I'll add is a color and I'll just call this outline color. I'll just leave the default on black. So I will disconnect our URP sample buffer from the base color node and I'll move it out here. And I want to right click, do create node. And actually for right now, I'll just get rid of our URP sample buffer. So like I said, we're gonna sample the uh, scene depth. So I will right click and type in scene depth and I'll leave it on linear. Then I will want to add a remap node and I will have our depth intensity remapped from between zero and two to be zero and 100. And I will feed these both into a multiply node and I will feed this into an absolute node. And this is just to increase the intensity of our uh, depth texture that we get. And now I will uh, also use the scene depth and outline thickness to uh, sample the depth um, a few times and offset it in a different direction each time. And then we'll use that and get the difference between the normal scene depth and the offset ones. And that'll create our outline. So to do that, I will grab our outline thickness, create a remap node, feed it into the remap node and remap it from between zero to one, be zero and 0 0.01. Feed this into a negate node, want a vector two node and I'll feed the output of our negate node into the X input, and I'll leave Y on zero. And at this point, I'll want to create a subgraph. So I'll go ahead and save our asset here, and right click, go to create, shader graph and subgraph. I'll just call this outline subgraph, and I wanna open that up. And our output is going to be a float. I'll just call it out. And the inputs we'll want are a float called depth intensity and a vector two called offset. Drag offset out here, feed this into a tiling and offset node, and I'll want it to go into the offset input. We'll grab our scene depth and I'll set this to raw and feed the output into the UV4. Create node, multiply, drag our depth intensity out, create a power node with power three, drag depth intensity into the power node and multiply these two and feed the output to out. I'll save this as our subgraph. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking an offset for our scene depth and multiplying it by a certain intensity to uh, really accentuate the outline. So we'll go back in here and I'll want to create node subgraph, our outline subgraph. And for offset, we can feed in our vector two. And for depth intensity, we'll want to feed in our depth intensity. And we'll want to do this for every direction. So right now this is offsetting to the left of the image. So essentially I'll just highlight all this, control C, control V. And instead of a negate, we'll just feed the output of the remap node here into the vector two. So then this would offset it to the right. And we'll want to add these two together and we'll want to do this again for the up and down directions. So I'll highlight all of that. We'll see control V, try to line it up. I'll just feed these into the Y 
option and leave the X untouched so we get the up and down directions. And then for these two, we'll want to add them together. We'll just add those. And then I'll also want to do the diagonals. So I will just control C and control V again, grab these. And this might be a little more tricky. All right, so out of the gate, out of the negate, we'll want to feed into a multiply node. So I'll do multiply and I'll want to multiply it by 0.5 since we're doing the diagonals at 45 degrees. So multiply those, same thing down here, but with the direct remap value. So we'll want to get the negative direction in both of them, the positive diagonal for both of them. Those get added together and I'll highlight this, control C, control V, put this over. And now we'll just want to get the negatives and positives, negative and positive diagonals. So for that, I'll remove that, remove that. We'll want the negative X, positive Y, and the positive X, negative Y. So just crisscross our applesauce there. And like we did before, we'll just add these together. And then we can just add the last part here. Now we got all of our offsets. And now we'll want to add a multiply node and I'm going to multiply by all of these diagonals that we added together for the edges of the depth texture. And I will just multiply it with the output from our absolute node here. I will feed this multiply into a step node. I will add our URP sample buffer with the blitz source. Let's add that right over here. We'll add an invert colors node and feed the step output into the invert colors input and I'll just invert the red channel. Um, all of these are just a single float, so the red channel is gonna be the equivalent of like a vector one or a float. So we're just inverting the value that we get from this multiply and from this step. Out of this step, I want to go to another multiply and I wanna multiply by the outline color. I'll feed the URP sample buffer blitz source into another multiply node, multiply it by the output of our invert node and then I can just go ahead and add these two together and I'll move our fragment shader down here. And the output of this add, I will feed into the base color input here. I'll go ahead and save and let's see how that looks. Not all too different. Let's see, outline thickness is zero. I move that up. Oh, well, one thing we're missing for sure is uh, if we go to our Universal Render Pipeline Asset will have to enable the depth texture. Also enable opaque while I'm at it. Go back to our shader, increase our outline thickness, and as you can see, the outline grows for the object. You can set what color you want. And yeah, if you wanna do multi-outline, I haven't actually done this, but I believe you could just duplicate your graph. I'll increase this one and I don't know, let's make it red, or yellow, I don't know and go to our rendering folder and you can just add another full screen shader pass. It'll select the invert one by default, but you can just feed in you the one that you want. There we go. Oh, well, I guess you can't do that. <laughs> Unless maybe I do before. Oh, there you go. So you can change the injection point to get multiple layers, I suppose. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, that is really all I had for you today. Uh, kind of a simple video if you only looked at the first part. So yeah, that, that ought to do it. One thing to note is uh, it probably won't render correctly in the scene node. As you can see here, mine's not rendering super well. Uh, but in the game node, that's really all that matters. Um, you can move around the scene and it should just work. Um, we can even add in more 3D objects. We can do a cylinder, uh, move that Oh, move that somewhere else. Let's, uh, I don't know, a uh, capsule might be cool. Rotate that, move it somewhere. As you can see, this is a very cost-effective way and time-effective way to just add simple screen effects. If you need an effect to affect everything on the screen, like if you just want to add like a simple outline to your game, this would be a nice way to do it rather than doing the inverse hole method like I showed in my other video. Uh, well, anyway, if this helped you, please leave a like and comment down below for anything you'd like to see next. If you wanna see more full screen shader graph tutorials or anything particular for like Unity, uh, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye.